Hi everyone, in this video we're going to discuss RRSPs, which stands for Registered Retirement Savings Plans. Now, many Canadians, when they think of RRSPs, they often think of a financial institution or a bank. This is because financial institutions are usually the ones to administer an RRSP. So RRSPs, what are they? Well, they are savings accounts administered usually at a bank. RRSPs have some tax advantages. For example, RRSPs allow for tax-free growth. RRSP contributions are tax deductible. And finally, withdrawals are going to be taxable. Next, let's take a high-level view at how these accounts work. Meet PARM. PARM is an individual resident in Canada, and she has options. PARM can have a regular savings account or an RRSP account. In fact, PARM can have both, and she does. And PARM contributes cash to each account. Over time, the amount in each account grows. All things being equal, PARM can then expect her savings to grow. This is due to a number of reasons, but let's assume that it's simply due to interest. That's great. You might be wondering at this point, well, what's the difference between these two accounts? The difference is going to be in a regular savings account, PARM is going to have taxes on that interest that's earned, thus reducing her overall return. This raises the question. Why does any of this matter? Well, you know the time value of money matters. And over time, PARM stands to see her savings in her RRSP account grow significantly more than her savings in her regular savings account because the interest can compound on itself tax-free in the RRSP account. But this is only one of the benefits of an RRSP. Let's keep going. Remember, RRSP contributions are tax deductible. Let's go back to PARM. PARM not only saves, but PARM has to file taxes. Taxes, as you know, involves the calculation of net income for tax purposes, taxable income, we have tax credits, and eventually we get to net taxes payable. We'll let that be represented by this gray block on the screen. Now remember, our RSP contributions are tax deductible, and PARM has been contributing to an RRSP account over time. In theory, the more she contributes to her RRSP account, the less her taxes payable will be. We'll let her RRSP contributions be represented by the reddish-orange box over on the left. That'll be our contributions to the RRSP account. Now, contributions do not have to be deducted. What that means is the contributions being made into the RRSP account can be viewed in different ways. Perhaps a portion of what PARM has been contributing, she has chosen not to deduct or not claim on her tax return. We'll call those contributions undeducted contributions. The remainder that she does claim on her tax return, we can call deducted contributions. How does this impact taxes payable? Well, the less she chooses to claim on a tax return, the higher her tax is payable. And the opposite is also true. The more that she claims on a tax return, the less her tax is payable. And this naturally raises another question. Why not put everything into RRSPs? Great question. One, remember, RRSP withdrawals are taxable, so it's not possible or convenient to use an RRSP account as your daily bank account. Next, there is a maximum limit to RRSP contributions. In lecture, you reviewed all of the detailed provisions in the Income Tax Act that relate to that limit and RRSP contributions. And it's time we apply that to a case. 
So let's get technical and review the key provisions. This will be a broad overview of the key provisions because again, you've gone through it in detail in lecture. But the provisions that matter in the Income Tax Act for what we're talking about in this video are section 146, subsection one, earned income, the RRSP deduction limit, the RRSP dollar limit, and the money purchase limit in 147.1 subsection one. We'll also spend a moment in this video talking about another provision, 204.2 subsection 1.1, which deals with the non-cumulative excess amount. Let's look at earned income. Remember, earned income for childcare expense purposes is different from the earned income I'm talking about in this video. Earned income for RRSP purposes includes employment income earned by the individual without any RPP deduction, income from carrying on a business, net rental income and royalties. Royalties if the recipient is the author, composer, or inventor of the work. It does not include interest, dividends, or capital gains. The RRSP deduction limit. Remember, this is the maximum contribution to the RRSP that can be deducted in a year. It's determined by the following formula, A plus B plus R minus C. A quick refresher for you in terms of what those letters stand for. A is the taxpayer's unused RRSP deduction room. B is the lesser of. And then we have paragraph A, the RRSP dollar limit for the year. And B, 18% of the prior year's earned income. We compare those two amounts, paragraph A and B, and we pick the smaller amount. From that, we subtract the pension adjustment for the prior taxation year. The pension adjustment refers to any amounts contributed in the prior year by the taxpayer or the taxpayer's employer to other retirement savings plans or pension plans. And that's only fair. If a taxpayer has their employer contributing to a plan on their behalf, a taxpayer's deduction limit should be reduced. Next in this formula, we move on to R and that's the taxpayer's pension adjustment reversal. This might come up in a situation where if an employee was to leave employment prior to being invested into a pension plan, any adjustments that affected the past year's RRSP calculations are then reversed. And finally, we have item C, which is the taxpayer's past service pension adjustment. Sometimes a plan gets valued by an actuary and is determined an adjustment needs to be made to the contributions that they've had in their RRSP or their RPP. This could be due to changes in rates or it be, could be for some other reason. Perhaps an employee becomes part of a plan and they're credited for their service before joining the plan. You can think of it this way. If contributions are made to a plan retroactively or there's some other reason to believe that the taxpayer's benefit has increased over time from those previous contributions, think of a defined benefit plan, for example, the RRSP deduction limit will be reduced. Next, we have the dollar limit, and the dollar limit is defined by yet another term. It's called the money purchase limit. And the dollar limit is usually equal to the prior year's money purchase limit. So let's talk about the money purchase limit. We've now moved on to section 147.1, subsection one. And the money purchase limit you can think of as the annual ceiling applicable to contributions made to a registered pension plan. And finally, we'll talk about one last provision. Essentially, it's where we will find something called the non-penalty excess. A taxpayer has a small buffer where they can over contribute to an RRSP without incurring a penalty. And some people use that amount strategically. Now let's take a look at an example. And first we'll review the case facts. Here we are looking at a Microsoft Word document. This question has been made available to you or a question very similar to it. 
It's talking about a taxpayer by the name of Ted. Ted has the following financial information. The first thing I'll point out to you is regardless of what years you have in your question, uh, the question has been presented to you with the years in reverse chronological order, meaning the most recent year is on the left and the oldest year, if you want to think of it that way, going into the past is way over on the right. A lot of times in introductory tax courses, you'll be presented with a bunch of figures so you can figure out what the taxpayer's earned income is. In this case, you're told what their salary is for a given year, the standby charge, deductible car expenses, rental revenues and expenses, non-eligible dividends, taxable capital gains, capital loss, and employer contributions to a DPSP. A DPSP stands for Deferred Profit Sharing Plan. What I want to point out to you right now is based on reading the definition of earned income for RRSP purposes, these items, the non-eligible dividends, the taxable capital gains, and the capital loss are going to be irrelevant for that calculation. All of the other numbers will probably use. Let's go a bit further and read the narrative. In December of 31st, or as at December 31st, 2018, Ted has unused RRSP deduction room of 2200. He made $400 in contributions to his RRSP in 2018, but did not take a deduction for that amount at the time, as he was paying such a low rate of tax and was already receiving a tax refund for the year. What that tells us is, this is where we're going to start with the unused deduction room of 2200, and we also have $400 in undeducted contributions. The company he works for started a deferred profit sharing plan or a DPSP in 2019, to which the employer makes contributions in years where there's adequate profit to do so. The profits cannot be withdrawn from the plan until the employees retire. Ted makes no contributions to the plan. Still, these amounts will eventually end up reducing Ted's RRSP deduction limit. Finally, we're told, assuming Ted will make maximum possible contributions and take maximum available deductions, determine his maximum contribution without penalty for both 19 and 20. Let's quickly make a note here that making the maximum possible contributions, what that means is Ted is actually going to put as much cash as possible into Ted's RRSP account without incurring a penalty. That is different from taking the maximum available deductions. The maximum available deductions is referring to how much is Ted going to claim or deduct on Ted's tax return. They're two different things. Remember, Ted wants to achieve both of these without penalty. So if we're gonna do the calculation for 2019 and for 2020, we need to calculate earned income. And I have the earned income calculations right here below. Remember, when you're calculating 2019's deduction limit, you're gonna look at the prior year's earned income. So the prior year's earned income is 2018. And in 2018, the only relevant number that we have there is 28,000 of salary. So for 2019's deduction limit, the prior year's earned income is gonna be $28,000. For the 2020 deduction limit, the prior year's earned income is gonna be looking at 2019, taking the taxpayer's salary, the standby charge, deducting the car expenses, and the net rental revenue. Excuse me, in this case, it's gonna be a net rental loss and adding all of that up. The prior year's earned income for the 2020 deduction limit is gonna be 32,350. Let's go ahead and look at the rest of our solution. We'll start off with 2019. We know the formula is A plus B plus R minus C. A is equal to the unused room. That was given to us in the narrative. We started off with 2200 in unused room. B is the lesser of 18% of the prior year's earned income or the RRSP dollar limit, which you can look up in the tax act. We'll start off with 18% of the prior year's earned income. If we take 28,000, that was the prior year's earned income, multiply that by 18%, we get 
we should get about 5,040. We compare that to the dollar limit for 2019, we get 26,500. So the lesser of these two amounts is 5,040. And we'll bring that number over here to the right. Then we could subtract the prior year pension adjustment. So from the point of view of 2019, the prior year is 2018. I'll quickly scroll up. In 2018, the employer did not contribute, they did not contribute anything to that deferred profit sharing plan. That means from the point of view of calculating the 2019 deduction limit, the prior year pension adjustment will be zero. Our deduction limit then is $7,240. That is the most the taxpayer can deduct in 2019, provided it is supported by actual cash contributions to an RRSP account. We know that in the past, the taxpayer has contributed $400 that they did not deduct. So there's $400 sitting in an RRSP account that's not deducted. So the taxpayer can contribute a minimum of $6,840, that's all a taxpayer has to contribute this year in order to deduct the maximum deduction of $7,240. And that's because the taxpayer had already contributed $400 in a prior year but hasn't deducted it yet. One more time, a contribution of cash of $6,840 if we add the undeducted contributions from a prior year, that would allow the taxpayer to deduct right up to the limit of $7,240 for 2019. Now remember, the taxpayer does have this buffer, a non-penalty excess amount. It's currently at $2,000. It's been $2,000 for a long time. If the taxpayer was to take advantage of that, they could actually put cash into the account of $8,840 without incurring a penalty. But remember, the most they can deduct in the year is $7,240. And if they take that maximum deduction, they'll begin the next year with zero in unused room. Then we can take the lesser of 18% of the prior year's earned income. From 2020's point of view, if we are calculating the 2020 deduction limit, the prior year is 2019, and we calculated the earned income to be $32,350. 32350 times 18% is going to be 5823 We compare that to the RRSP dollar limit for 2020, which is 27230 The lesser of those two amounts is clearly 5823 so we'll pull that number here to the right. We then subtract the prior year pension adjustment. Again, from the point of view of calculating the 2020 deduction limit, the prior year would be 2019. If we take a look at 2019, we see the employer contributed $100 to a deferred profit sharing plan. We can then deduct that $100 and we get a deduction limit of $5,723. Remember, in the prior year, the taxpayer over-contributed by 2,000, the max over-contribution they could make without incurring a penalty. That over-contribution was over and above what they could deduct for the year. So they have undeducted contributions of $2,000. That means this year, the taxpayer can contribute $3,723 and if we consider the 2,000 that's sitting in the account already but wasn't deducted, their total deduction would be $5,723. Once again, they could take advantage of the non-penalty excess. They could put in $2,000 more, and so the total contribution without penalty would be $5,723. Listen, I know that can be a lot. Why don't we all take a moment and let's just take a breath. <sighs> Doesn't that feel better? Now go ahead and close your eyes and let's try to visualize this RRSP situation and what just happened. 
actually, did I say close your eyes? Forget that, don't close your eyes. Open your eyes, look at the screen. I'm gonna show you what happened. This taxpayer took money. They put money into an RRSP account. Specifically, they took $400 and they put it into the account. But they decided not to deduct it. So that's an undeducted contribution. I'll represent that with the color blue. The following year, the taxpayer puts more money into the RRSP account. Specifically, they put in $8,840. That means that our total contributions to this point are $9,240. The taxpayer then decides to take the maximum deduction available to them. This would be the RRSP deduction limit, which we calculated. We calculated the amount that will be deducted to be $7,240. And that means only a portion of all of the contributions have been deducted. There's an undeducted portion. That undeducted contribution is $2,000, the intentional over contribution to the RRSP. Now remember, in the following year, the taxpayer contributes even more to the RRSP. How much do they contribute? $5,723. That means the total contributions are now $14,963, a portion of which is not yet deducted. That would be the over contribution and undeducted contribution from the prior year plus the contribution from this year. All of that is not yet deducted. Well, the taxpayer then decides to deduct as much of this as possible. And once again, that's the amount that's equal to their RRSP deduction limit, which we calculated to be $5,723, the remainder of which is undeducted contributions. That was a lot of information. I really encourage you to try this question a couple of times over again on your own. And until next time, I wanted to say thank you. Thank you so much for watching and happy studying.